Okay, we're going to talk more about x86 memory. Um, so some reminder, uh, we have posted homework one and two, and the homework one is due next Tuesday. And please sign up on the Piazza website the, for the course. And all the lecture notes, homeworks uh, posted there, I'm going to use that as a major um, place to play, uh, put, put up all the announcements. Um, we're going to first review a little bit on the basics of x86 architecture and the segmentation. We talk about these data registers, pointer registers, index registers, and we have six segment registers and one flex register. Six segment registers, CS, SS, DS, ES, FS, GS, uh, give, give the microprocessor six active segments, total 384 kilobytes, because each segment has 64 kilobytes. And all the segments starts on 16 byte boundary. Um, that is why you can see that lowest hexadecimal digit of the 20 bit address is zero. The logical address refers to this pair of SBA and EA. SBA stands for segment base address, EA stands for effective address. And we have a number of examples here DS colon SI. So in this case, the SBA is the value in register DS and EA, the effective address, is the value in SI. Physical address is the actual memory address. We also uh, use the word linear address. In the real mode case, the linear address is the physical address because there's no additional translation after uh, the segment translation to linear address. And the way we translate the logical address to the physical address or linear address is by shifting um, the 16-bit segment register to the left by four binary bits. If you represent the value in hexadecimal, you're basically adding a zero at the end, a hexadecimal zero at the end. Then the second step is to add the 16-bit effective address to the SBA. And we have this example uh, in the handout, and we just uh, showed you how to do the translation for the CSIP and ES uh, column BX. And here's again how we do that. For the pair CS column IP, we do the shifting and, and we do the addition. So we eventually got uh, 10000 as the shifted segment base address and add the offset. So the, the final result is 10100. The H? No, the H is just the symbol to represent that's a hexadecimal number. H itself is not a hexadecimal decimal digit, so there's no way to add it. Yeah, so it's better to, well, it, it is mandatory to put this H or this 0x prefix to these numbers to indicate that these numbers are hexadecimal numbers. Because by default, we think if you don't have any prefix or suffix, they are decimal numbers. Um, also here shows uh, another example, segment base uh, and an SP. The translation uh, is very similar. Okay, I'll skip these ones. Okay, we showed you last week an example where we have a move instruction and in that example, we want to copy a value from memory to one of the registers in the microprocessor. And in that example, the way we specify the operand as a memory operand is by using a pair of brackets. And that's how, in fact, the x86 instructions um, will refer a, to a memory operand. Most instructions don't explicitly specify segment registers. And in these cases, 
data, data segment DS register is really the default one to use. Some other instructions use segment, um, stack segment or code segment as the default. Let's look at these several examples. And all these examples uh, use the basic move instruction. Move is data transfer. It's essentially copy values from a place to another place. When you move, you, no, you actually do not change or update the source. The first example, move AX comma 0100, and 0100 is within a pair of brackets. For this x86 instruction, we know that the destination operand, which is the AX, is the register operand. The source operand, which is the bracket 0100, that's a memory operand. We know that this instruction will copy a value from memory to register. Again, how do we do? How do we know that? Because the first operand is a register operand. We refer to the operand by using the register name. And we know that value is supposed to be in a register. And this bracket means that's a memory, memory operand. If memory operand is stored in memory, then the question is where in memory? When we say where, we really mean what is the address of that operand. And just remember, we just did a few translations, by right? translating from logical address to the physical address, which is the address the microprocessor used to access memory. So for this first example, when we have 0, 1, 0, 0 within the bracket, what is the logical address? When I ask, what is the logical address, your response would be, okay, what are the two pieces of information? The SBA and the EA. EA is actually here, 0, 1, 0, 0. That's the effective address. Then where or what is the SBA? What is the segment-based register we need to use to find SBA? Because there is no any uh, additional information, so the instruction will use DS by default as the SBA. So in this example, the logical address is DS column is 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, that's the logical address. And once we know that, we'll use the two-step translation. We can translate that logical address into the linear address, and then Access. So that's not the shifted address yet, the shifted memory. Right, this is a still yeah. the logical yeah. address. Yeah, we have not shifted yet. Okay. But from here, we can then do the shifting and do the addition. The second example, the only difference is from the first one is that you add this DS column before this bracket. And that is to say, we want to use this data segment, this DS, as the SBA, segment based address. It's the same thing. It's not really safer if you really want to, you really want to use DS. So it's, it's, um, oh, it's just showing you can do that. Okay. So first two examples are equivalent. So if you use DS, you do not have to specify it because that's the default one. If you use the other system that is not the default one. But yes, yes is not the default one. So if you don't say I mean the other system that DS is the default. Maybe DS is. Um, for Intel, it's all DS. Uh, for other processors, they may not even have DS uh, register. And their memory optimization might not be based on segments. Uh, so I want to emphasize that we're talking about this segment-based memory uh, and how we do the translation. 
use that specific keyword intel. Uh, for other processors, the translation will be similar in some way. They may have logical address and physical address, but the actual registers they use may not be DS or may not be uh, ES. Is the convention to what we specify? Um, well, if you just use DS by default, you don't have to. Uh, if you want to have your program use not only DS segment, but also ES segment, then in that case, you do need to specify. But it's okay that your program use only one data segment, and if that's enough. For larger programs, uh, if the 64 kilobytes is not sufficient to meet the purpose, then you need to use another segment. And your program, you want to be clear whether this 0100 is the offset in DS segment or in ES segment. And by using these prefix, we'll make that um, clear. In all these examples above, 0100 is the effective address. And the second register is either DS or ES. Um, the third one is ES. The first two both use DS. Okay, addressing modes. Um, this slide and the next couple of slides uh, require you to do some uh, memorization. You want to remember the names we give to these different addressing modes. Addressing modes is a general term to describe how we um, tell the microprocessor where the location is in memory. Okay, that's the meaning of the addressing mode. The first one I want to uh, discuss here is the direct addressing mode. And the example, the same as we used in the previous slide, move AX comma bracket uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, and in bracket. In this case, you see within the bracket, there's a constant number, what we call immediate value. That number is the only thing within the bracket. Nothing more, nothing less. And that's the direct addressing mode. The next addressing mode we want to see here is so-called registered indirect addressing mode. <coughs> in this case, the effective address, the value is stored in one of the registers. And we can use BP or SP for specific for stack segment. And if we use other registers, like in this case, bracket DI, DI is the index register, and in this case, we're going to use the DS segment by default. So compare this move with the previous move instruction, you see both of them have a pair of brackets, but the term inside the pair of bracket is different. In this second case, it's a register. In the first case, it's a constant number. And that's why they are two different addressing modes. And the first one is called direct addressing mode, and this second one here is called register indirect addressing mode. Because you need to get the value out of the register and use that as the effective address. And then you have base plus index. In this case, you can have two items inside the bracket. One is the base set register, the other one is the index register. And in this case, the way you find out the effective address is simply by adding the values of Vx and Si. The sum of these two registers will be the effective address for that memory of All these three you see, because of the brackets, all of these three will somehow interact with the address, with the memory. Either read data from the memory or write data to the memory. Now, my question is, which instruction or which instructions write data to memory and which reads data from memory?
Correct. So first and the third instruction read data from memory. And the second instruction here writes data to memory. Simply because in Intel's assembly convention, uh, we use the first one as the destination operand, and the second operand is the source. So this is the source, this is the destination. So we are going to read a value from memory at this location and put that value into AX. Okay, for the third instruction, I have another question I want to ask. How many bytes will this instruction read from memory? Okay, the answer is two bytes because AX is a two byte register. And when you say 16, you probably refer to 16 bits. Okay. Um, and because this AX, its size is two bytes, so this move instruction will read two bytes from memory to uh, this AX register. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, the next one is called register relative addressing. Um, here you again have two elements within the pair of brackets. Uh, one is the register, the other one is a constant. Um, and we have two examples here. First moving instruction within the bracket you have bx plus four. Okay. And then the next example you have only bx within the bracket, but the thing before the brackets is array. Array is, you can replace this array with any um, verbal names that uh, you may want to have. And the actual value of that array, or verbal A, verbal B, that represents a constant memory location. Okay, Even though you, you're using a uh, identifier to represent that array or that variable in some language, it actually means a certain value. So that value of array will be added to bx. And the sum of these two becomes the effective address. All right, so you have, uh, next thing is base relative plus index. Uh, you're getting more complicated uh, where you see more of these. And, I mean all of these coming into play, you have a constant number, you have a index register, you have a um, base register. And the last one is scale index addressing where you have this um, register and then process some scaling factor times the second register. That's when you want to do verbal strides if you have a large array or some data structure and you want to make certain strikes, strikes to access a series of data, then you may change the um, value of EBX to make that jump. Does that make sense? I know. Think about, let's say you have a big a matrix or some array starts from address uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. And then you want to access the next eight, four. You want starting from this point, you want to access the eighth um, verbal right after this, and then another eighth verbal after this, so we have this uh, jumps. Well, in this case, four. Four bytes after, four bytes after, four bytes after. So you can change this value, zero, one, two, three, four, then you can make that jump to access different uh, elements in a larger data structure.
Okay, so let me go back a little bit. So direct addressing is very uh, simple. Just a const number within the brackets. Then you have register indirect, where you have uh, index or base register within the brackets. Then space plus index. So that's really what in here. Base and that is the plus and index register. And the sum will be used as a um, effective address. And then we have the register relative. So you have register and a constant number, dx plus 4. And the next thing is we have uh, all the elements together. You have a constant number. You have index and in register, you have a base register. So that's called base relative plus index. And the next thing is the scale index. So you have um, some register plus a scaling factor times another register. Okay, uh, let's see. Next time we're going to um, do more examples of these addressing modes and we're going to talk about some language instructions. Um, so please sign up on the uh, course group on Piazza uh, and I require you to do that today. I'm going to cut it off uh, tomorrow morning. So if you're not in today, you're going to be out. Okay, it's easy to do, take you probably uh, two, three minutes. You can sign up on Piazza where you can find all the lecture notes, homeworks, due dates. Um, I, kind of, I will just use this Piazza because it has a course web page. I can upload all the notes and, and homeworks and also make announcements. So I'm going to use that um, exclusively. The first homework is due next Tuesday uh, before 10 a.m. You can email me. You can also bring a hard copy. Uh, for the homework, you will need to use Visual Studio. There are copies on the lab, uh, computers in the lab. And I be believe you can get free copies online. Microsoft uh, released that um, like a free to all the students so you can get it uh, for free uh, from, from Microsoft. Um, Oh, about the 